Hey everyone, it's Justin Roth again, and I'm back here again with another Jacob Collier guitar tutorial for his brand new video, live video of him playing an acoustic version of Witness Me that just came out. I'm with you. I'm with you here. You're the light I need in the dark I see. I'm with you. I'm with you here You are all I see You witness me Now we all know that Jacob's music can be very harmonically complex, but if you've not seen one of my guitar videos before, the great thing is, is that the way he plays guitar, acoustic guitar, in a, the special tuning, makes playing these songs and the way that he plays them way, way easier. The chord shapes are super accessible. They are not difficult jazz chord voicings. Now I don't want to alienate anybody by saying that anything is easy. Playing guitar takes work. However, if you already know how to play basic chords, you have the finger strength. So that's one of the biggest physical hurdles. All of Jacob's chords in this tuning on acoustic guitar are built on only three strings. There's only three notes. So we're able to think of these, think of it like when you first learn power chords. We don't have to think about big complex chord voicings here. We just have to think of three notes all built on the lowest three strings. So let's dig in and take a look. Now, if you haven't seen one of my Jacob Collier guitar tutorials before, check the description below for the chord voicing video, which is one that goes over the nine primary shapes that Jacob uses in all of the acoustic versions of the songs that he's released so far. This song has two new shapes that he has not used in others that I have not seen yet. So if this is the first song of Jacob's that you're going to be learning, take a look at that chord voicing video just to get familiar with the shapes and how they're related and what their function is. That video will also explain the tuning. And this is one that he has used on many other songs that we have heard already. Like Sun is in Your Eyes, Little Blue, Time to Rest Your Weary Head, the acoustic version of In Too Deep, the acoustic version of Never Gonna Be Alone. And sometimes there's a slight variation on the upper strings, but all the chord shapes stay the same in this tuning. So if you learn one of these songs, you're gonna end up learning all the shapes that you need to know for the future tutorials I'll be releasing on the other songs. So if you like the acoustic guitar versions that Jacob releases of his songs, smash that like button, click the bell notification to stay tuned when my future tutorials come out. Now I've already got a transcription finished and published for this song. The link for that is also in the description. So grab a copy of that and follow along. Now a really great thing about this song is one that there are no modulations. So it's pretty straightforward. He's got a few chords that are non-diatonic or outside of the key, but they're just the same shapes that we've already used, just putting them in different places on the neck. And so what I want you to do is as I demonstrate them is to focus on your, the left hand shapes. This song, Jacob pretty much does a consistent figure, finger picking. I'm not even gonna call it a pattern because it's not really a pattern. It's kind of, he's kind of more grabs the strings and uses the top strings without fretting them as drones or he calls them pedal notes, which are notes that just kind of stay consistent. And he uses them across all of the chords pretty liberally. So we have a lot of freedom with our left hand, whether you're a finger picker or a strummer. This is the great thing is even Jacob says about his own playing that he doesn't think much about technique or the right hand. In his own words, he has said when it comes to technique, it's more about being committed to your idea or what you hear in your head, and then you can do whatever you want to do. So we don't have to think of the transcription or learning this song as a right hand technical piece. Once we have the chord voicings, we've got 95% of the sound of the song, whether you're finger picking or strumming. So just a really quick review about what this tuning is. Again, that's all in the chord voicing video that's linked in the description below. But it is, we're capoed on the third fret and the tuning without the capo would be D, A, E. So those are tuned in fifths. And then Jacob only has a five string guitar. 
um, which we've all seen. Um, so to, to adjust for this, we still leave our third string or our G string the same. He does not have that string. Uh, and then the top two are A and D. Okay, so I'm just gonna play the intro. And the beauty of this is once we learn the intro, we have learned all but two of the shapes that we need to know for the entire song. So it sounds like this. Okay, just a quick review of each of those shapes. The first chord is our major chord shape. And again, we're just focusing on the lowest three strings. So up here, I'm counting up from the capo. So this would be the 12th fret above the open string. So it's built 12, 12, 14. Root, fifth, third. Our next chord is a major chord in first inversion, where it's 11, 12, 12. The next chord, we're only moving one note. It's a minor chord in first inversion, and we're just sliding the index finger down a half step. 10, 12, 12. Now we're going to another major shape in first inversion, a half step down, 9, 10, 10. It's the same shape as we did two chords ago. Next one is a diminished chord, and where it goes 8, 10, 9. Then to the major chord in second inversion, seven, nine, ten. Now we're going to that same major shape that we used up on the twelfth fret, but now it's on the fourth fret, five, five, seven. To a major chord in first inversion, same shape we've used twice already, but in a different place, four, five, five. Then to our minor chord shape, which we have not used yet, down on the second fret, it goes two, two, three. Now when you get the transcription, what you'll notice, and the thing that tends to intimidate us as guitar players, especially if chords beyond our standard open position chords that we first learned, when we start to see scary names, like large chord names, the beauty of this tuning, and all ultra tunings really, is that and the way that Jacob uses it is that all the extensions, which means all the extra names on the chords that make them sound complicated, for example, E minor seven add 11, or G add nine, things like that, is that all of those extensions in this entire song, except for one chord, all of the extensions are given to us with the top two strings. So when you look at the sheet music, and you see all these bigger chord names, don't be intimidated. All you have to look at, is it a major chord? Is it a minor chord? Is it an inversion? So that's really the beauty of all this stuff. All the extra notes are provided for free and we never have to fret any of them. If we were in standard tuning, we'd be working pretty darn hard to get those notes. And we don't wanna do that, do we? No. Neither does Jacob. He wants to focus on his performance, right? And we love him for that. So let's take a look at the first verse. You tell me you're broken. You tell me it's over now. You say you're done hoping. You tell me all the lights gone out. Well, maybe you're lost. Maybe you're far from home. If you only keep walking. Never walk alone. All right, so no new chord shapes. The only main difference is that we use that major chord and second inversion shape on the fifth fret, which we hadn't used before. We used it up on the seventh before. So you goes major chord and second inversion to major chord in root position to major chord and second inversion to major chord in root position. Let's try that pre-chorus. When I'm with you, there's nothing that I wouldn't do. You're the one that I'm waiting for to bring out the best in me. 
I'm out in the blue I'm holding my hand out to you You're the one that I'm waiting for I'm holding on to you All right, all except that last chord are shapes that we've already used. We've got our major chord shape in root position to the major chord shape in first inversion to a minor chord in first inversion to a major chord in first inversion to a diminished chord in first inversion to a major chord in second inversion to a major chord in root position major chord in first inversion minor chord to a major chord in root position back up to the 12th fret for a major chord in root position to the major chord in first inversion minor chord in first inversion major chord in first inversion diminished chord in first inversion major chord in second inversion major chord in root position minor chord which we haven't used this we've used this shape but not on the fourth fret to an a7 and now this is a case where the extension or the seventh he's actually fretting it in the lowest strings a lot of other times when we get a seventh say on the e minor chord that's from the open string but here he's actually fretting there's our seventh and our sus four All right, moving on to our first chorus. I'm with you, I'm with you, dear. You're the light I need, you're the dark I see. I'm with you, I'm with you here. You were all I need, you witness me. Okay, again, all the same shapes that we've used before. I'm just going to walk through each one slowly again. This time the major shape is down instead of on the 12th fret, it's open. But notice the relationship of the strings, 0, 0, 2, is the same as up where up on the 12th fret, 12, 12, 14, meaning that finger on the 4th string is 2 frets above the bar. So we've got a major chord in root position, and he does a pull off in this spot um, each time it comes around. I'm with you. So the next chord is a major chord in root position. I'm with you here. To a minor chord in root position. You're the light I need. Major chord root position. Major chord in first inversion. In the dark. Back to the major chord in root position. I see. It's a major chord in second inversion to major chord in root position. I'm with you, major chord in root position. Major chord in first inversion. I, I'm with you here. This is our minor chord in first inversion. Major chord in first inversion. You were all I see. So here he kind of walks down, changes the rhythm and how he changes the chords. Major chord in root position, major chord in first inversion, minor chord in root position. You witness. Major chord root position, major chord first inversion. Me. And we learned this A7 at the end of the pre chorus. Seven, ten, ten. Now the song goes on to the next verse, and this is where the lyrics are different from the studio album version because they've got he's got Stormzy uh, on that and doing kind of the rap spoken word thing. So here he sings some new lyrics, and that verse has all the same chords as we did the first time, just half as long. And then that will roll into the second pre-chorus with all the same chord shapes. And you can follow along with the transcription link that's down in the description. So next up is what I call the bridge, just because there's some subtle variation in his phrasing, still using all the same chord shapes, new set of lyrics. 
This is the part where he says, you've been searching and searching, but don't look no more. And that section sounds like this. You've been searching and searching, but don't look no more. So a lot of that's very familiar to other things we've done in other sections. Here's where he makes a leap from the open position version of what we had normally started up here on the 12th fret. He goes. And then again, this is where we get to use the drones. The drones ring. We get to move. You've been searching and searching. Don't look no more. So identical to the first pass of that. And now we're into the outro. Again, all the same shapes. Sometimes he changes the order he uses them, which is why the transcription will be super helpful. Or he'll change the rhythm in which he plays it. And in the transcription, it shows whether or not he's staying on a chord for an entire bar, or for two beats, or for one beat. And you'll also notice, generally in his playing, he's anticipating chords. So just to keep it more straightforward in the transcription, I have mostly quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. But for example, instead of going one, 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 two, three, four, he might be going one, two. So he's anticipating that second chord a lot of times. And you'll get that from listening to it. So let's look at the first half of this outro. It's basically like the chorus. He does one different change on uh, one of the chords here at the very top. It goes, I'm with you. This is our major chord shape in second inversion, zero, two, three, which is just an inversion of our four chord. Just doing it down here. That's the beauty of the way that he uses chord inversions is that he's really thinking about the voice leading of the chords. When we just learn open chords in standard tuning, our, our notes are kind of jumping all around. He's really thinking about how one note leads to the next, especially since all of these chords are three notes, triads. He's thinking of how one each note is moving, just like he does when he does a cappella, you know, vocal stuff. It's all about the voice leading, which makes it so signature and unique. So it goes like this. I'm with you. I'm with you here. You're the light I need. Now he hasn't done that little riff before, but it's all the same shapes. Major and root, major and root. And then we go to the latter half. And he starts with the one chord again, or what, you know, we've done it here, we've done it here. Both major chords in root position. But now instead of jumping from this shape back up here, he does this. This is in just another variation. Now it looks like the major chord and second inversion that we use here on the seventh fret, but now it's just letting the open string. So the last part goes like this. I'm with you. I'm with you here. You were all I see. You witness me. You were all I see. Those are all the same shapes we've used before, but there's one new chord and a new position when he gets to that final witness. We're coming from the line, you were all I see, you witness. These are the chords that we love from Jacob. Our ear is not ready for them and we're like, oh, where, what are we doing? But it's just a major chord in first inversion built on the sixth fret now. It's this surprise lift before we resolve in the end. You witness me. To the A7, this is another time where the seventh, we're actually voicing in the lowest three strings. There we have our final signature Jacob lick to lead us out. And it's pretty straightforward. So the top two strings, Start on the 2nd fret, 
and there and he has said uh, in other videos he's like he a lot of these licks he doesn't even use his right hand aside from the first note or you don't even have to do that you get a little stronger attack if you start it he does that same lick that he does on the first string on the second string then he goes down to the fourth string which would be his third string because he doesn't have the third string but the second fret on our fourth string and does a hammer on from two to three this is where i suggest starting with your middle finger in this position because it's two hammer ons in a row followed by a slide So two, three, hammer on the second fret of the fifth string, then slide that shape up two frets. And he goes back down to the second fret, two, three. And there you have it. We're at the end of the song. Now I have got to give kudos to Jacob for many reasons, many reasons, but London, rooftop, totally exposed uh, on a December morning. Maybe it was January. I don't know how soon they filmed that on a winter's morning. So he's only had a few weeks to be able to do that. You could see his breath. You could see at the end of the video how cold his hands were. And which is why I applaud him and also forgive him that he missed two chords in that little final outro. Um, he was going for a high note and, and I, I've done gigs in 40 degree temperatures before and your fingers just stop working. He landed in the wrong spot for two chords or, or missed like a note. Um, so my heart goes out to him for that, but we know what this guy is capable of. It's good to see he's human too, right? I also wanted to mention that I do have a Patreon page where I'm growing a community of people who are interested in, in these tutorials and hopefully in the future expanding beyond even Jacob's music to other techniques, other tutorials about other tips and tricks, and also a way for you to get more involved with additional transcriptions or supplemental materials, um, some Zoom lessons or one-on-one -on -one things. So I would love feedback um, from you of what you would like to see, not only the songs of Jacob's that I should do next, but other tips and techniques that you're interested in learning about. Um, I'll post different polls there that you can answer questions, which just kind of helps me know what to focus on next. I've got a lot of ideas, but I would definitely love to get your feedback and I would greatly appreciate your support. So I hope to see you over there. So again, if you like this kind of tutorial and want more of Jacob's acoustic versions, I've got about five or six more on deck and we've got a new album coming out. There may be more. I was not even expecting Witness Me to be released as a solo acoustic version. So yesterday when I turned on the computer and I saw it, I was like, yes, and I jumped on it right away. And so I'm so glad to have this captured and get it out to you right away while this version is so fresh. So if you like these kind of versions and these kind of tutorials, smash that like button, click the bell notification. I'd love to stay in touch with you. And please, in the comments below, let me know what songs you're interested in. Um, the ones that you've heard, sometimes the album versions, you don't hear the, the acoustic guitar for anything that's got the guitar featured and especially the live videos that he posts on YouTube. That's where I'm drawing a lot of this material so that solo artists like, or guitar players who aren't gonna try to perform this song like it is on the album, meaning with all the instrumentation, we wanna know what these chords are so, so that as an individual we can play them and we are so lucky that Jacob gives us these versions and that learning how he plays them is actually pretty straightforward. Yes, it's new shapes for your hand, but three notes, three notes only most of the time. So most of the work that we have to do is geography, meaning we just have to know where we're landing on the neck. So it's not like we're just playing open position chords down here in, in first position and not having to travel around the neck. We, we are jumping. So that is the challenge, but the shapes themselves are not that difficult to play. And so I wish you the best of luck. Please send me a message or you know let me know how it's going and feel free to ask me any questions. Most importantly, make the song your own. Do it how it feels right to you. I think that's what Jacob would want.
See you next time.